Hey, what's up guys? It's Bajan over at Baker Hill Farm and today we're talking about my tomatoes. And it's not anything super exciting. It's actually pretty devastating, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's in God's hands. So I'm gonna tell y'all what's been going on over here in the tomato patch. So y'all know I believe in mulching pretty heavily. I use hay for mulch. Um, you probably know that too. So, y'all know I mulch pretty heavy with hay. Ignore the puppy, he's fine. The drama king. I may have used hay that had herbicide in it. And I discovered that this was a possibility. I was obviously devastated. Um, my tomatoes are like curling in on themselves. It looks like beet curl beet curly leaf or whatever that virus is. That virus is transmitted by leafhopper bugs. A plant can't give it to another plant just from being in close proximity, but a leafhopper that feeds on one that's infected can jump to the other and infect it. The reason I don't think it's that is because it's all of my tomato plants, except, no, those are starting to get it too. It's all of my tomato plants in this one area where I used a certain hay. And I have two that aren't affected that I didn't put hay on. So that kind of obviously tells me it must be the hay. I guess I can't say it definitively because I saw a video. Well, first, let me show you what it looks like. Then I'll tell you about the other video I saw. Okay, so this is what they're doing. Um, see how that's curled? I mean, it's all like that. The new leaves, the new growth, it looks like little worms. But it's supposed to be the leaves. And they're brittle. I mean, they'll just, if I rub it, it'll just break off. So, look. The next plant. The next plant. The flowers are fine. Um, when I looked up herbicide contamination, it said the flowers would be pretty susceptible just like the tomatoes so I don't know I'm so confused here are two that do not seem to have it at all now as you can see these were in my mulch video where I explained how I do the chop and drop method right here just because I have all this arugula growing so why not I mean they're not affected like that is kind of a pretty clear indication that it's likely um, herbicide damage from from the hay that I put here on these tomatoes. I did not put it all over my garden, thank God, but I put it on like 48 tomato plants. Well, 46 tomato plants and they all pretty much look like this. Some look better than others. None of them look like, none of them look good. And if I don't get any tomatoes, I would not be shocked. The basil is not affected at all, which is also confusing to me because that is kind of a tender leafed plant. Um, what else? Oh, so I saw this video from Lazy Dog Farmer. I think he works with Haas Tools. A friend of mine told me that because she sent me the video. And he seemed to be having the same issue, but only with like, you know, six or seven tomato plants. With me, it's all of my tomato plants. And it seemed like he thought it was an issue with the heirlooms not being able to take our heat that we've been having and kind of the intense heat fluctuations that we've been having as well. I mean, when this started like a week and a half ago, it was like 70 something degrees one day for like three days. And then the next day it's like 86 and then 90. I don't want any of, I don't want my tomatoes to die, but I would feel better if I knew I'm not the one that killed them. I mean, I rely on this crop. I had a sweet friend give me eight plants. Thank you so much. Um, I planted them in a different part of my garden 
they're not canning tomatoes or anything but I mean I will make it work I will I'm gonna baby those plants and do whatever I can but in the event that this is an like an heirloom can't take the heat kind of situation I brought a sheet outside um, pin it to the back of my trellis sorry I think I just like spit I'm gonna pin it to the back of my trellis and see if maybe I can cool it down over here they're still green so they're not dead so that gives me hope they don't look like they're gonna do anything also I live in a pretty long growing growing season I'm in 8a so I'm going to um, plant some more seeds I planted some more yesterday but I planted the same heirloom so if that's the issue hopefully it will just be way cooler when I put them out but another thing okay look, look, look I'm rambling if it's the hay I did put it on some of my peppers and my peppers are doing good but they love heat guys help me what is wrong with these tomatoes it is not the curly leaf virus okay I know that there's no way a leaf hopper could go to every single plant I have two plants here however that remember I told you on that video um, I got some of those plants for free um, from our local nursery these are them so they are kind of curling up a little bit but not near as bad and they have fruit on them um not a whole lot they're they're indeterminate varieties my the ones that i'm growing grew from seed that are all affected are determinate and semi-determinate my basil looks fine the peppers they look pretty good there was it was only on just a couple of them and they look good. I even put it on my sweet potatoes way before I put it on my tomatoes and all my sweet potatoes are doing great. Sweet potatoes love the heat. I don't know if these determinate and semi-determinate heirloom varieties that I planted in my garden, if they, if they love the heat. I went and looked at the reviews from where I ordered them from and people were growing them in pretty, in a lot of heat. Oh, another thing, beans are supposed to be really, really, really susceptible. Remember I planted those pole beans on the back side of the trellises? Like, look, that's, that's okay. That one's okay. Let's see, I didn't put one there. Oh, I did. It's fine. This one's fine. This one doesn't look too hot. This one looks okay, but it has a little bit of yellowing. That one has some yellowing and that one does. So I don't know, I don't know. So I'm gonna hang this sheet up. This isn't the sheet, this is tool. I tried this, I need like three layers of that. I don't plan to go to the store, so I'm not gonna get that. I'm just gonna make do with what I have. And I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray that I don't lose every tomato I planted, but it's out of my hands. What can I do? Um, oh, another thing I am gonna do though, tomorrow, or no, Friday, I'm supposed to get some activated charcoal in the mail. I'm gonna kind of like dig that down and plant that around some of these plants because it's supposed to suck up toxins. It could be too late. It may not even be the issue, but it could be the issue. Oh. In other news that's not devastating, we're gonna dig some potatoes today. These potatoes look pretty bad. Right here, this row. So as you can see, they're looking pretty rough. We're gonna dig this row up. We're not gonna dig that row up because they don't need to be. All right, so got my kids out here and see what we got not sure how many i planted right here maybe like five pounds so yeah i think this was like maybe 12 and a half pounds i probably had a total of 25 pounds and split it between the two rows so uh, 
got one on this one. All right, so we got most of this row dug up. I realized once we got down here that this was where my Yukon started. So you see we got a couple of those. So we stopped. I was wondering why these were still so green. That explains it, it's a different variety. Just my reds were dying off and really disease looking. That's about what we got. We've got a couple of kids with shirts full of potatoes. But overall, that's a okay harvest. Um, so that's okay. I didn't really know what to expect. I grew potatoes last year, but I've never grown this many potatoes. Or I'm out of breath. We've been digging potatoes. <laughs> but I have this whole other row. We have like 50 sweet potato plants in the ground. This definitely won't be enough potatoes for the year, but it's a lot more than I grew last year. So I'm just happy with the progress. And I'll know next year to grow probably three times this much, which means we're gonna need to expand the garden again. Good thing we're already tarping it and um, getting ready for an expansion, so. All right guys. It's the same day. I came over here to check my sweet potatoes, um, just see how they were doing, and now I'm really starting to think that it was an herbicide in the hay. I am so upset. <laughs> the new growth on my sweet potatoes looks like it's damaged. So that's definitely making me think that it's an herbicide in the hay that has leached down to the roots and the new growth on these plants are being affected. So here's some new growth. Um, do you see this? It's like really hard and crunchy over here. Look at this. It's starting to curl. The leaves are deformed and curling in on themselves. Yeah. So I think this hay is the issue. At this point, taking it all off will probably do nothing because if it is an herbicide in the hay, it's obviously washed through and is down at the roots. I'm gonna take what I see of it off anyways, just in case there's more in it. All right guys, so update on the tomatoes. I'm pulling them all up and putting them in a trash bag. I had an ag guy come out, um, somebody from our, our parish's ag center, and he looked at the plants, he looked at my tomatoes, he looked at the garden and said he thinks that it's a, it's a wilt that it's either a bacterial wilt or a fungal wilt. He said that he's seen a lot of it this year. And he said that those types of things will travel within a species. So my sweet potatoes are right across from these tomatoes. I don't know if I use the same shovel or what, but that could be why they're showing signs as well. So he recommended that all of the tomatoes that look severely affected that I pull out of the ground. So <laughs> that's all but like two. So I'm out here pulling up like 46, 48 tomatoes. And it's very depressing. I'm hoping that my sweet potatoes are big enough and strong enough to get through it. Um, See, I mean, they look good. They don't look like these tomatoes. I'll show you them. I mean, this is like crispy. Um, check that one out. Yeah. It is all hot and bothered, but not in a good way. So now I'm concluding this video because there's nothing left to say about these tomatoes other than it stinks, <laughs> but it's also, I don't know, I'm also kind of like, uh, cause I have some beans on the back of here that are getting some yellowing leaves now. This could be a nutrition issue. 
I mean, do I have, do I have this many issues in one area? Maybe I do. I don't know. The only reason I brought the bean up is it's a different species. But if it were the hay, I did use the hay on these peppers too. And they look good, but I'm not touching them until I wash my hands because it's like the garden pandemic out here and it's suspicious.